hatred, love in all of us come and God on brass a porte le il se porte la croix ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits Please be seated. Bonjour and welcome to the Fall Convocation 2023. This afternoon is a great time for celebration. And I'm so very pleased on behalf of the university to welcome you all here uh, who are present, seated, but also those who are here joining us by online. And uh, we're so pleased to have everyone join us this afternoon. Parents, family members, and friends of the graduates, welcome. We're pleased that you're able to be a part of this, and we invite you now to sit back, whether you're in this room or watching online, and enjoy this moment as we celebrate with those in the front seats here who have accomplished a major milestone in their lives. The proceedings for today's ceremonies will uh, go ahead unannounced and as presented in your convocation program. So I now declare convocation open and I invite the Reverend Dr. Greg Jones to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, our creator, provider, sustainer, you, O oh Lord, are the one who reigns supreme through all the universe. And we acknowledge that you are the ultimate source of all wisdom and truth. Thank you that, as always, you are here with us, the presence of your life-giving grace. As we gather at this time to recognize and honor these graduates for their sacrifice, hard work, and achievements, we do so thanking you that not only not uh, thanking you not only for them. Uh, but also for all who have contributed to and supported them in their educational journeys. Family, friends, and also the faculty, staff, the board, the supporters of this school. God, we pray that as these soon-to-be graduates step into the next phase of their lives, that you would continue to guide them and cover them with your goodness. May they never lose their passion for knowledge, truth, and understanding. And may they use the gift of their education and your calling upon them for the betterment of all and for the enrichment of your world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, and through the loving presence of your Holy Spirit here with us. Amen. The university scripture comes from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all its creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realm and on the earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all, who rise from the dead, so he is first in everything. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. 
Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. Good afternoon. It is my distinct privilege to be able to congratulate you on behalf of the Board of Governors of Crandall University for reaching this milestone. And it is a significant milestone and you deserve to celebrate. 2021, Canada every 10 years does a, a census. And in 2021, the Canadian census noted that a third of working age Canadians had a bachelor's degree or higher. But that drops to 9.3% of the working age Canadians who have a master's degree or higher. That statistic alone should make you think because automatically you enter into a, a group of people that have positioned yourself for leadership. So what does leadership look like for you? 84 years ago, Kirk Lowen identified three different kinds of leadership, autocratic, democratic, and laissez-faire. And then in the 84 years since, there's been a multitude of additions and alterations, and we could fill a library with the, the how-to books on leadership. Some of them are good. My favorite, one of my favorites, is Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you haven't read it, I would recommend it to you. It's filled with a variety of different insights, one of which is this phrase. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, let me say that again. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Not always easy to do. So that begs the question, what's the main thing in leadership? Well, fortunately, in Matthew 20, Jesus answers that question to his disciples. And we get to take a sneak peek at what the answer was. Now, context is important. Context is always important. Jesus was in the last half of his ministry. He had been receiving more and more opposition from the religious leadership who were quite upset that he wasn't obeying all the rules that they had made up. Um, and that didn't seem to bother him. And so Matthew tells us that Jesus had already informed his disciples three different times that he was going to Jerusalem, that he would be persecuted, suffer, and die in Jerusalem, and would rise again on the third day. But they didn't get it at all. And you can tell they didn't get it because they, they just seemed to be clueless. Uh, two of them in particular, two of the inner circle, John and James, came to Jesus and through their mother asked if they could be seated on the left hand and the right hand of Jesus when he comes into their kingdom not really thinking about which, what Jesus had just said to them about being executed and then rising again. Well, when the other disciples found that out, they were not impressed at all. And so Jesus has to haul them together, and he says this to them. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his, his life as a ransom for many. That's the kind of leadership we need. We need leaders who will be servants, leaders who will commit to a cause greater than themselves, 
who will desire to contribute to society and not just to their own financial well-being. And my prayer is that God will be with you on your journey as you seek to become the leader, the kind of leader that he wants you to be. God bless you. This afternoon, I have the honor of introducing our convocation speaker. And I think for many of you in the first few rows, this person is a familiar face. Dr. Brown, Dr. Danny Brown, has served as a faculty member at Crandall University and its former designations, Atlantic Baptist College and Atlantic Baptist University, for 26 years. Eleven of those years, Dr. Brown served at the rank of associate professor, the rank he held as a tenured faculty member upon his retirement from Crandall in July of 2023. A year earlier, Dr. Brown retired from his position as Dean of International Academic Programs, and in July of this year, from his position as Dean of Remote Learning. In 2018, I had the honor of talking with Dr. Brown about the needs and opportunities of coming back to Crandall from Cape Breton University to provide administrative leadership to new educational initiatives designed to serve the unique needs of international students. At the time of that invitation, we were unclear as to how the final programs would develop and eventually look, but Danny was up for the challenge. Today, we have hundreds of international students registered in graduate programs and many more at the undergraduate level. I honestly believe that Crandall University would not be where it is today in its efforts to serve international students if it was not for the entrepreneurial spirit of Dr. Brown. It is because of his dogged determination and leadership as Dean in the launch of what we first called the Division of International Academic Programs that Crandall University Board of Directors has decided to bestow upon Dr. Brown the designation of Dean Emeritus. This morning, we recognize the honor granted to Dr. Brown by the Crandall University Senate through the title of Associate Professor of Management Emeritus. This afternoon, I invite the President of the University to present Dr. Brown the honorific title of Dean Emeritus granted to him by the Crandall University Board of Directors. Dr. Brown is married to Judy. I think she's still here. There she is. Yes, and three children, five grandchildren. And many of his members of his family and close friends are with us this afternoon. So I now invite Dr. Brown to address the graduates. Thank you, John. Two adjectives I'm happy to be known by, dogged and entrepreneurial. Thank you. <laughs> And I would like to say, this is not part of my speech, so don't time me right now, um, that I, I know I've probably told him this individually and personally too, but John has been my greatest supporter uh, during my time here. And I know it wasn't always an easy task because he's supporting that dogged entrepreneur who didn't want to take no for an answer sometimes. But... Uh, I just, I couldn't have asked for a better uh, support mechanism than what he provided for me uh, while I was the dean. So thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, fellow faculty and staff, uh, family, friends of the graduates, and of course, the graduates. It is a great honor for me to have been asked to be the convocation speaker this afternoon. It's a great day for me and my family and a fabulous capstone to a career spanning more than 43 years, 26 of which were spent at Crandall, with nine additional years serving on the Board of Governors, giving me a 35-year history with Crandall. Now, today, you may be looking ahead to a new chapter in your lives and uh, what might be ahead of you, wondering, will your hopes and dreams be fulfilled? 
Well, I have the unique privilege of looking back over a career that spans more than 43 years and giving a perspective that you don't have yet. Over my career, I have often advised my students that life is too short to be in a job that you don't like. I hope you remember my saying that. <laughs> I'm so happy to say and can honestly say that I loved my career. Loved being a business prof professor, and yes, there were some rough times along the way, some difficult times, but overall, very positive. I've also had the privilege of teaching at three different universities in the Maritimes, offering me a wide range of educational experiences for which I am grateful. I am also blessed to have my family here today to share in this perspective and these celebrations. I have no illusions that I would have gotten here today without their love and support all these years. So let me begin by saying thank you and I love you. <laughs> I thought I was going to get through that today, this afternoon, uh, for supporting me and enduring me uh, and enduring with me. Uh, as John has mentioned already, uh, I retired from active duty on, on June 30th, uh, but while my engine may be idle, uh, it's not in the turned off mode just yet. I fully expect to keep the engine running for many years to come. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. How do you keep the engine of life running? Uh, now, for you folks, I know that you've uh, already spent some time out there in what some people would call the real world. And I know you've already had some issues with trying to keep your engine running. Uh, and maybe in the last couple of years, you've wondered whether or not you had any gas left in your engine uh, to run. So anyway, I want to chat with you this afternoon uh, about uh, some cautions, uh, if, I, if I can, that you should be thinking about. When I started teaching in the public school system in Manitoba in 1980, and that seems like, you know, centuries ago, I remember getting my first paycheck, and there was a box on this paycheck that had a projected retirement date on it, and the date was 2022. So I'm in 1980, and I'm thinking, 2022, like that's, you know, forever away. It's certainly nothing I'm going to be thinking about. Well, here we are in 2023, and I've just retired. Knowing that 40 years will pass faster than you think, I'd like to give you some timely cautions to consider now that you're ready to begin another stage of your life. Now, these tidbits may not be earth-shattering or necessarily novel, but they are worth repeating. Caution one, time stops for no one. There are no red lights or stop signs on time. Don't let life pass you by while you are living it. All too quickly, you'll realize that years have passed you by, not just hours, days, or weeks, but years. And those years quickly turn into decades. Recently, I had the privilege of meeting in person a boyhood friend who I had not seen for 55 years. Now, I remember back in the day if somebody had said that to me, I'd say, well, how old are you? Well, here we are. It's important to plan for the future. It's important to learn from the past, but don't forget to live in the present as well. C.S. Lewis said, the present is the point at which time touches eternity. Enjoy where God has placed you. Believe in the plan he has for your life and thank him regularly for your current situation and learn how to make the most out of every moment. Just think, it was only two years ago since you began your educational experience at Crandall. In retrospect, you probably think that even those few short years have gone by very quickly. Caution two. Practice lifelong learning. Oh, are you kidding me? I just finished a degree and you want me to keep learning? Yeah, I do. The minute you stop learning, you stop living. This is another piece of advice I often have given to my students. Uh, Albert Einstein said, intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. Henry Ford, a name we are familiar with, said, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 
or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. I've often thought that being in a constant environment of youth during my career has helped me to remain youthful, even if I'm not. <laughs> Keep that learning engine running. One degree or even two degrees do not necessarily mean that you have arrived. When I got my first degree in 1980, a Bachelor of Education degree, I thought I had the world by the tail because I was the first child in my family to get a university education. And that's more poignant when you realize that I was child 14 of 16. Well, 43 years and three more degrees later, I'm still learning and want to continue to learn as long as I can. Now, I'm not saying you have to continue to pile degree upon degree throughout your life, but don't be afraid to admit there are still some things you need to learn. Embrace learning. Embrace knowledge. Embrace change. Managing organizational change. Remember that one? That was a good one. Learning comes, that was my perspective at least, uh, learning comes in many forms. It may not always be in a formal situation like at Crandall. It may happen in your family. It may happen in your leisure time. And it may happen in very informal situations. Lifelong learners need to be entrepreneurs. They see life through a different lens than most of us. We need to always be on the lookout for learning opportunities. Caution three, be people of the world. What I mean is, be more globally minded. Realize that our world is made up of innumerable peoples who deep down are very similar to you and me, but also have distinct differences in family dynamics, food preferences, and faith practices. It's important to be informed about life and the world around us. Our world is in a constant state of change, and if you want to stay connected with your world, you're going to have to change. About 15 years ago, I started my journey to begin, or to being more global-minded. I wish it had started sooner, but I'm glad that it happened when it did just the same. My life has been so enriched and broadened by the hundreds and hundreds of international students that I've had the privilege of teaching since 2009, including all of you. I appreciate our world and its diversity with much greater understanding than I used to. It's also offered me the opportunity to teach in China on two separate occasions and to do recruiting in India for Crandall. These were mind-blowing experiences for this boy from a large, low-income family in rural New Brunswick. We need to try to understand the world in which we live through new lenses. And I know that many of you had ideas of what Canada was going to be like when you got here, but you had a few surprises along the way. A few, yeah. And finally, and maybe most importantly, caution number four, love and allow yourself to be loved. In the Bible, John 15 tells us that God commands us to love one another. It's not a suggestion, not a if you want to, not a if you'd like to, or feel up to it, but it's a straight up command. And in that same chapter in verses 13 and 17, he, he reiterates that and says, love each other as I have loved you. And in 1 John 4, we're admonished to love one another, for love comes from God. And whoever loves God must also love his brother. Not, well, if you want to, but must. Whenever there's conflict in our lives, it seems to be all-encompassing. Whenever there's conflict in the world, it seems to be all-encompassing. The reality is that most of the world is at peace with one another at any one time. But all it takes is one area of conflict to remind us that not everyone loves each other. We know that love comes with a cost. Every time we're separated from loved ones, if even for a short time, it hurts. I don't need to remind you that some of you I know are maybe hurting just a little bit today because family aren't here with you. Every time a loved one dies, it hurts. 
Every time we're at odds with a loved one, it hurts. But it hurts because we love and are loved. And for that, we can and should give thanks. Sometimes it's not easy to love, and sometimes we find it hard to love. And in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks a lot about love. But at the end of that chapter, it says there are three things that count, faith, hope, and love. But it says the greatest, not faith, not hope, but love. So love and allow yourself to be loved. So just in case I lost you somewhere along the way, the four cautions, time stops for no one, practice lifelong learning, be people of the world, love and allow yourself to be loved. And thank you so much for the privilege of teaching each and every one of you. God bless and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished faculty, proud families, and especially our accomplished graduates. I'm Dr. David Iramaze, Dean of Graduate Studies. And before we embark on the formal act of degree conferral, let us first give thanks to God once more for guiding our graduates to this milestone in their lives and for gracing our institution and faculty with joy of beholding the fruits of our collective efforts. Dr. Danny Brown's heartfelt speech surely should have echoed within you. His words are a reflection of our educators' fervor as they impart a fragment of their soul in the quest to foster your growth and triumph. Indeed, dear graduates, your success is the very essence of our own. Today, undeniably, the stage is yours. As you stand on the threshold of new beginnings, Consider the statistics that you heard today about how exclusive the club of graduate degree holders is worldwide. Now, as the famous saying goes, if you torture data, it will confess. <laughs> and uh, two of us had different data to torture, so it confessed the same, same thing, slightly in different percentages, but basically the same thing, that only fraction of Canadians and even less worldwide hold any kind of graduate degree. You stand among the distinguished few in terms of educational achievement, a testament to your steadfast dedication, resilience, and the unwavering support of your loved ones and mentors. So I urge you to wield this privilege with intent. Employ your new qualifications to affect positive change, and serve as agents of goodness in the world. The true measure of your education lies in the betterment you bring to the lives around you. May your future endeavors be richly rewarded as the path that has led you here. Congratulations. Now let us proceed with the formalities. And I do ask in advance for your grace and dash of humor if I don't do justice to your unique and beautiful names. Greetings, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, members of our provincial and local government, distinguished guests, members of the University Senate by whose authority we confer these academic credentials today, members of the academic faculty, staff, and of course our graduates. It is my pleasure to present our graduates who have successfully completed the prescribed course of study for their respective degrees. The names of all graduates shall be called. The names of those graduates whose degrees are presented in absentia will be called at the end of the conferral of degrees. With no, with no further ado, I welcome those members of the platform party assisting the chancellor with the presentation of credentials to assume their places as the first graduates come forward.
Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree Master of Management. Raul. Yeah. Jairo Andres Alvarez Torres. Ashish Pravinbai Babaria. Haran Beer Singh Bular. My name is Little Han. <laughs> Suchitra. 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 Suchitra Biswa. Anand Kumar Bharatbhai Chauhan. Anju Davis. Jose Gerardo Escobar Lopez. <laughs> Minal Gambiri. Sharat Gopinath. <laughs> Rinki Sen Gupta. Mansir Amisbai Hadwani. <laughs> MD Shorab Hussein. Toma and you can yay. <laughs> Kevin Joseph. Yush Kanshambani Kakadia. <laughs> Shiha Kapoor.
Now, Neat Cowell. Rupinder Kaur. <laughs> Sukhme Kaur. <laughs> Hashayar Khabazi. <laughs> Nite Lingua. Monire Mahdawi. <laughs> Shivani Makar. Sneha Anna Manuj. Eja Narayana. Fatima Niknam. <laughs> Noura Nizar. Ojo Oludolap. Irene and Afluchi Okanu. In your bong, Michael Ocon. Fanmilayur Hari Tumbe Halur Mori. <laughs> Harshkumar Thakurbhai Patel. Nitu Paul. (Applause) 
Juan Esteban Pérez Álvarez. Kartik Pillai. Manes Pillai. Amrita Rajendran. Ekta Rani. <laughs> Imanshu Saiti. Shailaya Sharma. <laughs> Harvinder Paul Singh. Kirandeep Singh. Bharat Sirwani. Paras Tanwar. <laughs> Prashant Upadeya. <laughs> Maria Teresa Yu. Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree Master of Management graduating in absentia. Marnia Alves Roja. Zoli Mireya Badilo Rivero. Armando Martin Baltazar Ukwidi. <laughs> Amandeep Kaur. <laughs> Ramandeep Kaur. <laughs> Sandeep Kaur. <laughs> Aman Mahajan. Bahaduddin Faiz Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad Aranali Hashmatali Sayed. <laughs> Mr. 
Damon Preet Singh. Yannick Sherika Smith. Mr. Chancellor, I welcome you to address the graduates and bestow their credentials. Thank you very much, Dr. David. And if you don't mind me taking a moment on behalf of my wife, Faye, and myself, just to add our personal congratulations to each one of you. It represents such a large achievement, and we're so proud of you today. By the calling of our mission, and by the authority of Provincial Charter and of the Senate of the University, it is my great pleasure to admit you to the degree, rank, and title of Master of Management. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduates of 2023 of Crandall University. Congratulations. <laughs> well done. Good job. Yes, you may be seated. At this morning's convocation ceremonies, uh, we recognized two individuals who received the convocation award for this fall 2023. Uh, they were Alana Mary Nicholas for the Honor Society Award, and it was Jennifer Ede for the Management and Graduate Studies Award. What I simply want to note for you today, which was significantly noted this morning, is that the title of both of those convocation awards was changed. Uh, the first was changed to the Dr. Roger Russell Organizational Management Honor Society Award, for which Alana Mary Nicholas received the honor. And the second, this morning it was announced that the, the award was changed from the Graduate Studies Award in Management to the Dr. Danny Brown Graduate Studies Award in Management. So going forward, those students who receive those convocation awards will carry it in honor of those two gentlemen. Well, we're now reaching the conclusion of our ceremony, and graduates, I know that many of you have friends and family who are watching online, and many of you also have friends and family who are in the room behind you, and all of these folks have supported you in your studies. And I wonder if you might like to take a moment and stand up and turn around and wave to all of your friends and family. like to uh, conclude our convocation today by sharing with you a few highlights from the life of the university. But before I do that, graduates, I'd like to acknowledge on your behalf a special word of thanks for your professors and for the staff who've supported you in your studies. At Crandall, we think we have wonderful people who serve here, and I hope that you found them to be a good help and assistance to you during your studies. Here's a few highlights from 2023 at Crandall, things that you may know, you may like to know, or you may not, but bear with me for two minutes, how's that? Uh, we're very pleased at Crandall once again to celebrate another record year of enrollment, uh, a largest gift ever that we've received to our annual operating fund, as well as our largest gift ever to our endowment fund that's used to support our chapel program. For the fourth year in a row this fall, we've been able to freeze tuition to make a Crandall educational experience available to as many as possible. 
uh, entrance to uh, virtually all of our programs, masters and undergraduate programs this fall were filled to capacity. Campus housing was functionally full. This summer we completed a beautiful million dollar expansion and renovation to our Rollick Library. I counted, and since 2022, since that summer, we've added 31 brand new positions for professors and for additional staff here at the university. Our chapel program witnessed its highest attendance in the past decade, and uh, I'm also just so pleased to note that we checked our records, and over the last five years, we've welcomed students from 64 different countries to Crandall, and that's wonderful. <laughs> Along with increased diversity in our student body, we've witnessed increased racial and ethnic diversity amongst our employees as, uh, as we've seen new arrivals uh, to our faculty and staff team. And this year, this fall, we've added men's volleyball as a new sport here at Crandall and we're pleased to, uh, to uh, allow our students and others the opportunity to enjoy watching them play. So in conclusion, I want to personally thank you all for joining us for our fall convocation. And graduates, let me wish you all the best as you start this next chapter in your life. Dr. Brown talked about how long it has been uh, that he spent some time, uh, the number of years that he spent at Crandall. And that got me thinking about the number of years since I began my undergraduate degree here. It's 39. Now I know you thought I was only 35. That's not true. Good makeup that I use, yes. You know, in these nearly 40 years, uh, my wife Penny and I have prayed faithfully for Crandall University. And we've also sought to give financially, faithfully each year. One of the things that amazes me about Crandall is not only that we don't receive or ask for money from the government, any level of government, to fund the operation of this private university, but we depend upon generous individuals. So I want you to know as you wrap up your study that there are thousands of people who each year give generously to Crandall to support you in your education. And here's what makes that really interesting. They're probably not related to you, They'll probably never meet you. They probably don't know your name, but they believe in you, and we all believe in you. And there will be a day in your life, probably not tomorrow and maybe not next year, but your financial circumstances will change, and you may have an opportunity to give to support the next generation of students at Crandall, and we would welcome your consideration at that time. Graduates, we are very proud of you, and we do pray that God will bless you as you leave this place, ready to begin a new portion of your life. And uh, we will be watching with interest to see where you go and what you do. So keep your professors in the loop so they can keep me in the loop, okay? At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Knowles to come and to close our ceremony with prayer by praying for you, the graduates. would like to remind you that the Chancellor has extended a welcome and uh, invitation to you to come to the reception following this ceremony. Just make your way from uh, Murray Hall over to Stultz Hall through the link and all the family and friends can join us for that for a time for lots of pictures with our Chancellor and President, faculty and friends and family. I'm going to share a prayer with you as we close and uh, remind you to stay standing as we have the uh, university hymn and also the recessional. Let's stand together. Lord God, we thank you for this uh, wonderful occasion. We celebrate achievement, we celebrate gifts, we celebrate the privilege to learn and to share that in community. And we thank you for all of the hard work, thank you for all of the understanding, thank you for all of the, the privilege that has been undertaken in these days of learning together in this environment. And we pray that those who will come behind next year uh, and the years to follow will continue to receive a good, solid education here from caring faculty 
in an environment with caring staff, and we pray that we would continue to uphold our mission to see lives transformed to your honor. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. Amen. Strike.